Jean-Michel Basquiat was born in Brooklyn. He had a Haitian father and a Puerto Rican mother. My name is Basquiat, he would pronounce in the French manner, not Basquiat, as Americans would say. Nearly 20 years after his premature death, the international impact of Basquiat's work continues to grow. We take a look at his life in New York in the 80s and celebrate his return to the city in a new exhibit of his drawings selected from French collections. street again the lower east side it looked like a war zone like we dropped a bomb on ourselves but it was okay i'd met a beautiful woman and she'd put me up for a night or two found enough money in my apartment to buy a joint all i had to do was sell this painting for 500 bucks why not you can get anything you want here if you try you can get plenty of what you don't want, too, if you're not careful. Basquiat is New York, I believe. He, he was the youth of the 1980s, um, a beautiful boy, a man that people were very attracted to, and uh, someone who began a change in the attitude towards street art. Basquiat is at the French Embassy right now, and it seems fitting that that is where he is, given his connection to his father having been there, um, and that his connection to all of the great artists that come out of France. Since the beginning of his production in 1978, Basquiat was immediately collected by French collectors. Some of the drawings of his exhibition are dated from this 1978 year. You know. Enrico Navarra, who is a, a both art gallerist, collector, and also a publisher, was the first one during uh, Basquiat's lifetime to publish this uh, essay, a classic of the 21st century, with Edition de la Différence, uh, on Basquiat works, which was like a revolution at this time, because early 80s, Basquiat was for a lot of people something quite suspicious, is it a great artist, is it the genius some people say. And we have organized a 25 museum show around the world. I have the feeling that the 80s appear like very important years and Basquiat like the, the most important, uh, one of the most important guy of the 80s. We were living uh, in, in a neighborhood called Borum Hill on Pacific Street. Um, and they came and we were introduced to them and uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat and his father and his sisters. The neighborhood at that time was not, it was very, it was dicey. It was, uh, New York had been on its way down. And Jean-Michel was very much a child in the 70s and uh, very much into being a teenager in New York um, and wanted to be hip. We were aware that uh, Jean-Michel was uh, doing graffiti uh, and uh, using the name Samo. But um, I think at one point we talked to him about it and um, he, he seemed to have passed that stage. It was a, I don't know, an initial stage for him. The first time I met Jean-Michel Basquiat was on Glenn O'Brien TV party. Glenn had a, a show on uh, cable TV called, there is a documentary actually that he did, it was just released, and it was, uh, he had a mohawk and he was sitting next to me and he was uh, showing his little postcard. And we knew him as Samo. And actually that night live he said, Samo is dead. That means it was, there was no more Samo. And now I'm Jean-Michel Basquiat. People throw you out of your home, rip you off. What are you gonna do? You gotta be positive. You can do some good, make some public art.
Downtown 81 was filmed during the winter of 1980 to 1981. It was one of the coldest winter. It was very difficult to shoot and Jean-Michel had difficulties to get up in the morning and he lived in the production office and uh, he started to start to sell his little paintings and artwork to the crew or Debbie Harry or things like that. When we came down lower Manhattan Broadway, it was really no man's land there. But we knew that there was a lot of art things going on. We, the rents were really cheap, which we always go back to the same thing. Is like when your rent is cheap, what happens is you can really become creative. You, you don't have to worry about anything. It's not like now that everybody has to struggle and it's always about the money. There, we didn't care about the money. As a matter of fact, we only cared about creating. We only care about being. We only cared about the music, the scene, whatever, you know. One day he came downstairs and uh, he wanted to borrow money. Or, no, he wanted me to give him money and I said I wouldn't do it. So Jean-Michel went back upstairs and I had totally forgotten about him and he came back down uh, maybe in half an hour and he said, okay, would you give me money for this? And it was a drawing of a man playing a bass, uh, and, um, very heavy pants, very heavy clothes, uh, the sun was shining, and um, he wanted five dollars for it. And I gave him five dollars for it. <laughs> Basquiat's roots, I think, were important because of his relationship with his father and his mother. That sense that even though he was born in America, he truly wasn't an African-American specifically, and his father, who raised him to look upon himself as coming from a line of people who were, you know, distinguished, as you say, uh, Francophone peoples, and the Haitian connection, even though he didn't know Haiti except through his father, the Haitian connection of the African and the European, you know, just, it, 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 isn't, it isn't the same kind of connection that the African-American and the European has. So he sort of saw himself as being able to transcend that, that he was able to de-essentialize race because he came from people who were from the Caribbean, his mother being from Puerto Rico. And so he felt that he was, he was special in his blackness, he was special in his darkness. What is also interesting is that uh, Basquiat was not only, I think, proud of being a part of, of, of this world we call Francophony and IT, proud of his roots, but also that those roots, those cultures today, are very proud of Basquiat works. And you, one can see in all the Caribbean world and African world, artists inspired by Basquiat. I think in, in this portrait, one can see the, the genius of the draft man Basquiat was. And if Basquiat was always quoting uh, Michelangelo, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, and Picasso as his three top references, I think it's because those three artists were genius of drawing, as Basquiat is. He knew how to draw. And some of it was just intuitive, some of it was actually copying from one, a text, an art historical text or something he saw on television, um, from the descriptions of the kinds of uh, moments that he would be involved in his drawings, there would be television going, there'd be jazz playing, and he'd have books open all over the place, and he'd be moving, drawing from page to page to page, and it would be sort of these outpourings. So as a draftsman, he's exquisite draftsman, but I don't see, um, it's almost like he's drawing, but he's writing through drawing. Like each object that he draws has a story behind it, a narrative behind it. So I think he was actually doing poetry even when he was drawing uh, figurative things. Those 12 drawings compose uh, a series in itself of uh, uh, drawings Basca made about his street, Prince Street in Seoul, in 1982. At this time, Basquiat is always saying to his friend, like Julian Schneibel, etc., 
you know, New York is changing too much. I have to leave this city. Every artist needs their Navarra. I mean, every artist needs their champion. I mean, Jackson Pollock, who had very, you know, difficult to understand work, had Greenberg. You know, you need someone who is going to do the serious work of documenting the body of what you were about. I think what Basquiat did is just make a picture of what America is in the, in the 80s, of one vision of America, and this vision is still true uh, 20, 25 years after. The drawing of Vincent Van Gogh uh, shooting at, uh, at himself, that is the work of Jean-Michel Basquiat, is to always related to, to history and to important moments of the history. He, he related to the old master, like, uh, like Picasso did, like Matisse and all, all the big painters have done, you know. There is no uh, art without history of art. I've been very lucky to be part of the success of Basquiat. Uh, I didn't do no things for the success of Basquiat. Basquiat could have been Basquiat without me. Downtown 81 was conceived in around 79. It didn't come out for financial reasons. because It took us years to put it back together. And then finally, when it got finished, uh, I entered some festivals and then the fortnight took it. And from that on, it was like a snowball, you know, it's great. <laughs> And Jim, Jim, just a minute, y'all. I want you to spell for me something. I want you to spell for me New York, man. Why do you want me to spell New York, man? I just want you to spell for me New York. Can you do that, man? Sure, man, I can spell New York. Well, go ahead, man. N-E-W-Y-O-R-K, There is one person who is responsible for being on screen. It's actually Jean-Michel. Not only I had dreams, I know people don't believe in that, but I was pushed physically and mentally to finish the film like if I was guided, because I think he was so ambitious in his life as well as his in heavenly death that he really made sure this movie was coming out. Because for him, I think even before he died, he would rehabilitate the truth about, I'm a self-made artist, I'm a self-made you know, it, nothing became easy in life. Yes, I was a struggling artist, but I made it. So in that sense, that's why we choose the music we choose, because he liked Dillinger, or he loved this person, or, you know what I mean? So thank you, Jean-Michel. He was just a kid. He wasn't anybody famous. He was just Jean-Michel Basquiat. And I didn't see him for a while. Uh, about a year before he died, he called. By then, we had moved three blocks away, and he called me. And he called to say that he wanted me to know he was still the same person. And that was the last time I spoke to him. In 1960, the father of Basquiat, Gérard Basquiat, was a student. And to pay his studies, he was working at the French embassy. And one day, he received a call in December, and that was the, uh, his wife to say, our son is born. And the little baby Basquiat, Jean-Michel Basquiat, was going around the lobby here where today his drawings are exhibited. And then what, what do you have under here that you painted over? Some orange and some black. Yeah, and what, what's this big? What's this thing? Yeah. Just, just, just a, a diagram. With uh, what, uh, 150, 160? 150, 150. Uh, and what is that, a, a price? Looks no, like, no, yeah. no, no, no. My paintings only cost five cents. <laughs> and this, is, this looks like an eye? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the evil eye, the Malocchio. Oh. And, uh, and below there, what, what, what's this down the that, way? That, that's a Roman belt buckle. This, this says parasites. Parasites? Yeah. And uh, what, why'd you, what the par parasites meaning people? No, or, meaning, 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 meaning parasites. Yeah. Meaning parasites. So, so when, you're, when you're working on, on this, how, this Roman bu belt buckle, how, how'd you decide to? Oh, that, that, that's from a drawing. I, I did it at the Metropolitan of Roman belt buckle that was bronze. Uh, and so you 
just decided you wanted to put a Roman belt buckle there and went to your drawing? No, I wanted to put a Roman belt buckle on this painting where I had the idea to do it, and then I went all the way to the Metropolitan Museum, and I just did the drawing of the buckle, and I came back with it, and I put it right there. Oh, well, that's, that's kind of a slow process. Well, I'm a slow person. <laughs> Most films seem to come from the 19th century, director Alain René once observed. I want to make films that reflect the way we live in the 20th century, and that he has. Here is Shima Mon Amour, Last Year at Marienbad, Providence. These films and others virtually define cinematic modernism. Actor Lambert Wilson, who plays a frustrated loser husband in Alain René's recent movie, Private Fears in Public Places, talks to Canapé about the master. He helped me throughout a series of meetings. That's how we usually work with him. He um, calls each actor or actress separately, and we have about four or five meetings. They can last up to five hours each, and during which we go through each line of the script and then we talk about a lot of different things and, uh, and that's how it basically would, will reach a, a rather unconscious level in your, in your brain. Alors, comment trouvez-vous l'endroit? C'est-à-dire... Ça nous paraît à tous les deux un peu juste. Vu nos besoins, c'est ce que je craignais, n'est-ce pas, Nicole? Je vous l'avais dit. Nous attendions trois vraies pièces. L'espoir de nous donner événements. Quoi Non. Pour que Dan puisse faire sa sieste l'après-midi. Comme son père. Mettez une annonce dans un journal ou dans un magazine. Quoi Mais alors passez par un club de rencontres. Ou encore mieux par Internet. Oh là là, non. Pff, oubliez tout ça. Je suis incapable. Vous serez surpris, ça marche assez souvent. À mon avis, c'est pas des filles claires. Hein. Une fille pas claire, comme bruit de sauvetage, c'est pas l'idéal. On risque de couler définitivement avec ce genre de fille. Ça dépend de votre propre clarté. La même chose, monsieur Oui, la même chose. Je pense qu'il a été très subtil en montrant de temps en temps son touch très surréal. Vous savez... He always surprises one with new ways of filming, new ways of placing the camera, new... He's always uh, intrigued by uh, the possibility of discovering a new way of telling a story. En se plaignant de ne pas pouvoir respirer, je lui ai aussitôt donné ses médicaments, pensant qu'il s'agissait juste d'une petite crise. Ça l'a calmé. Mais il était encore euh, hyperactif. Hyperactif, c'est le terme, je crois. Alors, quand Lily est arrivée, c'est son aide à domicile du matin. Lily est une personne très sûre. Donc, quand elle est arrivée, je lui ai dit de rester près de lui. Il avait l'air plus calme, alors j'ai décidé d'aller travailler. Et puis, il y a à peine deux heures, Joël a téléphoné, m'a téléphoné. Joël remplace Lily l'après-midi. Elle est moins sûre qu'elle. Enfin, toujours est-il qu'elle m'a téléphoné pour me dire qu'il allait très mal. J'ai bien sûr aussitôt appelé le docteur qui, fort heureusement, était dans le quartier. Résultat, ils l'ont tout de suite emmené à l'hôpital. J'étais en train de lui mettre deux, trois affaires dans une valise. J'ignore le temps qu'ils vont le garder. Oh, mon pauvre, que de soucis. Je m'en veux de vous avoir fait faire toute cette route pour rien. Je prierai pour lui. Je prierai pour vous deux. Maintenant que vous êtes là, je vous offre une tasse de thé. And he does manage to surprise everyone, including his director of photography. So whenever he would come out of his trailer, to do a blocking or to do a, to explain to the t crew how he would film, it would always be a moment of, of excitement because he, we, we would think, ah, okay, well, what is it going to be now? He's really, he's been thinking a lot about this and, and, and he would surprise us every time. The anticipation of discovering the, the, the result of his imagination. He's a, also an extremely subtle, polite, gentle, generous man with whom Communication is a delight of every second.
First, there was Hitchcock, a Brit who loved France. Then there was Claude Chapon, who loved the films of Hitchcock and knew how to make them French. Today, there is Denis Dercourt, who has learned his lessons from the two masters. Take the trauma of a botched piano recital in childhood and cycle it into a plot for adult revenge. That's the creepy premise of The Page Turner, Denis Dercourt's film. He talks to Canapé about abnormal children. It is a, a film about, uh, how do we say, vengeance. Uh, she wanted to be a pianist and, uh, and uh, she, she had an exam and the person uh, uh, judging her uh, was not uh, loyal and fair this, uh, at this moment. And ten years later, elle va, elle va aller se venger. At the, at the exact end of the, of the exam, when she fails, uh, we are with this little girl who is so pretty and who plays uh, and she has her tears and, uh, and uh, we see that uh, uh, she, she is not exactly normal, uh, you, you know, like others. Um, so uh, it is in the field of classical music, but uh, it's, it's uh, like a genre or suspense film, uh, even uh, I would say a little thriller. Certain places define certain ambitions. The left bank of Paris is where you make it in the French literary world. It's a world of publishers, cafes, lovers, friendships, and of course, betrayals. Equally important, certain films capture certain places. Poison Friends, directed by Emmanuel Bourdieu, almost oozes the literary left bank. The director himself and actor Natasha Renier put Canapé in the know. It was uh, difficult to find the title of the film in English because uh, the movie uh, speaks about friendship, about uh, uh, a specific kind of, of friendship with, in which um, some one of the friends dominates the others. The characteristic of those groups is that uh, uh, there is one person, the most uh, influential, uh, the most uh, charismatic person who um, who takes a leading role and uh, in my movie his name is André. T'as le cul bordé de nouilles toi Vous voulez dire qu'il est pas à Berkeley Tu te rends compte qu'il a giflé mortier pour avoir sa maîtrise C'est sur le daring d'être toi-même. Et à cet âge où tu n'es pas un adulte encore, tu as une force en dedans, tu as ton point de vue de choses, mais tu n'as juste the doesn't dare to to say it or to to live it. On va faire la fête. Tu viens avec nous? Vous, vous venez? Que cette fille est belle. Que j'aimerais coucher avec elle. Tu veux pas plutôt qu'on s'embrasse? Excuse-moi, j'ai pas le temps. Et pour toi, cette fille. 
François. Tu veux dire que tu lui as écrit une déclaration Bah ouais. Il faut jamais rien écrire, pas même un mot. The fact that it's in the literature area, the only woman they can look at, it's uh, the library woman, which is the character I play. I think she tried to find her place too, and, and shows she's in love with the group. You can see that in the beginning she have special eyes on the one. But you know, sometimes it takes time to, to notice what really what you feel. And I think how it, 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 he, he showed that, Emmanuel Bourdieu, is really subtle. Écrire n'est justifié, ni même n'a de sens, qu'à condition d'être absolument vital. Mais il est brillant. Tout lui réussit. Lisez-vous dans mes yeux quelques tristes présages. T'es un acteur, Alexandre. T'es un grand acteur. Grâce à toi. He oppresses his friends. He dictates them everything. Uh, the, the, the shirts they uh, wear. Um, the girls they, they, they have to love. Um, and essentially the books they have to read. On the other side, he creates them. He makes for them the choices that uh, they are unable to make. Uh, he's um, courageous for them, in a sense. So uh, you never can say um, it's a tyranny or it's a friendship. My work as a director was to, to maintain this uh, un, un determination all the time. J'ai perdu mon dossier, elle disparaît. Putain, vous savez pas vivre. Hein. Faut vraiment tout vous apprendre. Hein.